it's encouraging to learn that there is still hope for our future. Up next is a film about a woman who has endured many serious problems during her lifetime. What's the secret of her survival? Let's find out now in a film directed by Nick Valenza. This is Levittown Lake where I grew up. We skated and swam in this lake. I was born in Trenton, New Jersey in 1954 and grew up in Levittown, Pennsylvania. We went to Sunday school quite often. My parents didn't always go, but we went to a First Presbyterian Church in Pennsylvania. And um, I actually like Sunday school. I like learning about God. Then when we got older, we graduated to the main sanctuary and we got to listen to the minister. I believe my father was a seeker because whenever we would go to church, we'd have these great conversations on the way home in the car. And Sundays, we would go to the shore and we'd continue those conversations. They didn't go religiously, but uh, I felt like God was always in my life since I was a little kid. I don't ever remember not believing in God. When I reached my teen years, I have to remember this was the 60s, I got a little crazy. We did a lot of partying, I got kind of promiscuous, uh, fell into a bunch of bad junk, and it wasn't a good thing. But I still feel like God was still around. I felt guilty when I did things wrong. But anyway, then um, I met my first husband, and he was six years older than me, so he had his head on a little straighter than me and brought me back down to earth. And we had kids. Life was good. I continued to seek God. Listen, I would always listen to the radio, Christian radio, see if I could hear things. But I never quite knew where to go. Um, he grew up Catholic, so we didn't really connect anywhere. And um, I just, one day I said, Lord, whatever, you're going to have to find a place for me because I don't know where I should be at this time. Unfortunately, in 1988, uh, my husband was killed on a job. He was an iron worker. Left me with two small children, three and eight. It was pretty devastating for all of us. Um, but I made a decision at that time whether I was going to be angry at God or whether I was going to lean on God. And who was I to be angry at God? I mean, this is we're talking about God. <laughs> so I felt that I um, needed to lean on his big shoulders and he can handle it. So I started going out to a church. My, all my in-laws and everything surrounded me with lots of love and pulled me into a church. And I was, I felt pretty good there. I mean, I, you know, with the devastation, yet something was being filled within me. My littlest one, Nicholas, was a very wild little boy. He was three years old. Daddy thought he was so cool. And he would just let him be wild. Well, now Daddy passes away and leaves me with this little crazy boy. And I remember the pastor's wife at the church I was attending at the time told me to look to Jesus as your husband now because you didn't have one anymore. I actually did that one night. We were sitting at the dinner table, and he's standing up in his high chair. And I just said, Lord, I can't deal with this. Please help me. Help me with this little boy. And it was like, God... Or someone just put their hands on his shoulders and sat him down in the chair and he was good for the rest of the dinner and I was like wow that is so awesome unfortunately when Richard died it was uh, a tragic accident that happened at work so there there was a court case and a lawsuit and everything and you know God was our provider he ended up giving me and both my kids, you know, finances to help help us live through our lives. And he's been pretty, you know, pretty generous. I mean, nothing can replace a human being. And I'm sure we all feel the same way. We'd rather have the have their dad here than the money. But, you know, he's God's still provided and he's been taking good care of us and I have to be thankful for that. 
Unfortunately, after three years, um, my second husband and I ended up in a divorce. It was pretty, pretty nasty, pretty upsetting. So I stayed home with my kids, and um, I finally had to get a job. I started working at Home Depot, and I had to work on a register. And it was very strange. I, I would have these little things where during the day I'd be on a cash register and I'd be running out of tens. I know this seems insignificant, but these are the kind of things that I feel like are God stuff that people probably experience all the time but never talk about because they're tiny. But I would, I'd be out of tens and I'd be like, oh, Lord, please get me some tens. And the next customer will come up with four tens. They pay whatever. I'd be like, thank you, God, you know. Or I'd be running out of quarters, and I'd be, Lord, Lord, I need quarters. What am I going to do? And the next person would come up, and I had a lady dump a whole bag full of $30 worth of quarters on my desk. Things like that. Like when I shop, sometimes I'll say, okay, Lord, if they don't have it in my size, I'm not going to buy it. And there it is in my size. And I'm like, thank you, God. And then there's other times when he doesn't want me to spend the money, and I just don't find it. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that also. After I got divorced, I felt like the Lord told me to take some time off and not date. I got a job at Home Depot. Of course, more men than women come in there. And it was, it was a good lesson. So I took a year off. I didn't date anybody. I continued going to my church and all those people and hanging out. And I was leading worship there, and it was great. And not dating. Then I felt like the Lord told me to take another year. Well... I ended up taking three and a half years before I even thought of dating somebody. And a couple guys came around now at that time, and nobody really jumped out at me. But this one guy kept coming through my line at Home Depot. I was a cashier at the time. It, it asked me if I was um, if I liked working there, and I was like, "Yeah, it's okay." He says, "Cause I'm getting I'm going to be getting a part-time job pretty soon here," and I was just wondering. If you like it. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I found out later I was in the tool corral, and he came in my into the tool corral and bought a tool that he didn't even need just so he could come pay for it at my register. I thought that was kind of cute. Anyway, he finally gets a job there, uh, and it was, it was Memorial Day weekend, and he was cooking hot dogs outside. They would cook for us on holidays. They still do that. It's kind of neat. And I came out to get lunch, and he said, what would you like? I said, I'd like a hot dog. Could you burn it for me? So that's how we met. And he called me two weeks later, and I said, I don't think you know how old I am. He thought I was younger than I was. I'm older than him. And we talked for a little bit. He had just gone through a divorce. I had been through mine. We had a lot in common. So he told me he had a motorcycle, and we, he said he was going to sell it. And I said, oh, oh, before you sell it, take me for a ride. Well, that clinched the deal. Next thing you know, we're dating. Uh, we went out for over a year, got married, and here we are today. Before we moved into this house, we lived in his house for a year. And I sold my house in Yardville, and it was a really difficult thing to do, but he wanted his daughter to go to school here in New Egypt. So I think the wiser thing was for me to sell my house. And I think it's difficult for a man to move into a woman's house as vice versa. So that was the decision we made. And But it was, it was very difficult. I loved that house. I was there for over seven years with my kids, and... You know, a lot of stuff went on there. So we moved into Patrick's house for 10 months and realized it was a little too small for our family. So we began looking around, and we found this house. And everything led to moving into this house. Unbeknownst to me, when we moved in, one day I realized the front door was the exact same front door as my house in Yardville. Those are the kind of things that I know they're not a winky dink as some people might think. After the divorce of my second husband, I, I began going to counseling. And I really discovered something about myself that really wasn't happy to discover, but it 
cleared a lot of things up that I've put too much trust in man. Um, and at one point, like my father died, my brother died, my first husband died. I was feeling like all the men in my life were just leaving. And I think God was trying to show me through that, not that he caused those things to happen, but he showed me through that that I had put too much trust in man and I need to put trust in him. And that made a big difference in this relationship that I have now because I feel like, you know, I respect my husband, I love my husband, but he's not... He's not my all in all. I mean, he, you know, I, he's, he is my husband, and he, you know, we, we've been getting, we've had some struggles, but we're, we're doing pretty good now. But I think because I put God first now, and no matter what happens in my life, God's my main man, <laughs> if that's a way to put it, and everything else falls into place. But if you have man as your first priority and God on the side here, that's not the right order. So I think going through that with my father and my brother and my husband dying, like it, it really taught me something. During the years and being involved in church and everything, I, I've been playing guitar and I sing. Uh, I took guitar lessons when I was 10 years old. Didn't really continue with them, but I know enough with the chords and everything, so they would have me play guitar. Now I'm involved in a church where I'm pretty much just the backup singer. I would like to do some leading of worship, but I feel like that's in the future for me. with a family that has artistic abilities. My mom, my grandfather, both of my kids have art artistic abilities and myself. This is a picture of Jesus in pen and ink and it's done with little tiny, tiny circles. I probably don't paint or draw as much as I should. It's a gift and I, you know, it's something God gives you just automatically, you know, it's in your blood. I think a lot of people think Christians are crazy. Uh, especially like when they hear born again. That's just a term that comes from the Bible that Jesus said, you know, you had to be born again, like talking about your spirit. I mean, I think we're all born with like a dead spirit. And at some point we have to take a leap of faith and believe in God. And your spirit comes alive through what we call the Holy Spirit. Well, a lot of people think that Christians are just crazy, wacko, nuts. The media tends to show that. You watch any kind of movie on TV, every time the crazies come in, it has to be a Christian. We just get a bad rap, no matter what. But I think to be a Christian, you have to have faith. And in order to have faith, you have to believe in something that you don't really see. It's not tangible. So people, you know, just because it's you can't see it or touch it, does that really mean it doesn't exist? We can't see air. We can't touch that. Our pastor gave a really good analogy of like a boat. And, you know, you're drifting along on the ocean. And in order to make the boat stop, you have to drop anchor. Well, that anchor is under the water. You can't see it, but you're trusting it. And you have faith that that anchor is going to hold you. So there you are. You don't see it, but is it there? It's there. It's holding you. And that's the type of thing where uh, faith, you just have to take that leap and believe it. But that doesn't mean we're crazy. We're all going through life. We're all going through difficulties. Some people have nothing to hang on to. Others find the Lord and they can hang on to that. I feel like God's always been in my life and whatever I've done, he's, he's been there. I didn't always know he was there, but now I look back and I see that he was there in every facet of my life.
No matter how much adversity she encountered during her life, she discovered that God was always there for her. That's all for today. And right now you can log on to our website, view the top 10 films the judges have selected and my personal favorite, and then cast your vote for the grand prize winning film. Thank you for watching Faith Film Festival. I'm Lorena Jorge, and we'll be back next season with a new batch of short film entries. See you then.